Uh, that is a lot of hagfish right there. Scientists are fascinated by these creatures. That's why Eddie collects them for scripts. This animal was around way before the dinosaurs, and whatever they're doing, they're doing it right because they're still here. Hagfish are actually among the oldest creatures on Earth. They can't see. They have no jaws or venom. So how did they survive so long? They owe it all to slime. The second you grab them, they just scream right out of your hands. So we have to kind of use tools to transfer them from the trap into a container. Okay. Look okay, at how many times you've done this. It creeps me out every time. A couple stuck back there. They can't even get out of their own slime. Look at that. We're going to give it a bit of a hand here. Reach way in here. Uh, this is the bait. It looked like a perfect mackerel just 12 hours ago. The hagfish go into it, eat it from the inside out, and it turns into that. And I just, I can't hold it anymore. That's just foul. Foul as they may be, hagfish intrigue researchers because they're among the only species that can regulate their oxygen intake, sending oxygen to specific parts of the body. Another reason scientists at Scripps want to study them. Hagfish are amazing animals. They're fish, but they don't have any scales, doesn't have any fins even. They're more like an eel. They have this cartilaginous type skeleton, and it's not a hard bony structure like something you and I have in our bodies. It's incredible how long these animals can go without feeding, maybe six months or even longer. They're spending most of their time just waiting for that seal or dolphin to land next to them so that they can sniff them out and start chomping away at them. All right, feeding time. It looks like just the thing that a hagfish would like to bury its little rasping teeth into. Let's go put it in the tank. All right, hagfish, come and get it. Hagfish may have no mouth nor teeth, but they can take a dead fish apart in hours. They'll even enter the rotting carcass to have better access to the soft meat under the skin. They scrape away at the flesh with tiny raspers, almost like a file. But what makes the hagfish really fascinating and really repulsive is clearly the slime. We've set up a little baby pool here to demonstrate completely non-scientifically just how slimy these hagfish can get. It's freezing cold. So just by disturbing the hagfish a little bit like this, I'm not really squeezing, I'm just kind of putting my hands down on top of them. And any little disturbance gets these guys going. <laughs> this is so weird. But there you go. Just by just touching them, moving them so slightly, they've created this amount of slime right there. Along the side of its body, it's got these slime glands, these white glands right here. It squirts out this protein, mixes with the seawater, and then creates this big slimy mess. It's a defense mechanism. If a predator comes in, it grabs the hagfish like this, and it's trying to eat it. The hagfish swims out of the predator's mouth. The predator's left with this big, gnarly, snotty mess in its mouth. That snotty mess can actually suffocate the attacker. The fish dies choking on slime. To you and I, this is absolutely repulsive. But for the hagfish, this is the defense mechanism which has kept them alive for 500 million years. Hopefully they'll be doing it for millions of years more. <laughs>